Good morning. Good morning. One of my favorite opening lines in a movie is um, Good Morning Vietnam. Do you remember that one? Good morning, Vietnam, right? It was just a way to wake you up. And it's good to see all of you who've gathered here with us in the sanctuary. And we welcome those who may be watching live online. And as always, we, we do pray a special blessing to those who might listen to this message and this service on podcast or later on delay. We pray that no matter how you have chosen to worship with us, that the spirit of the living God will just get all up in it. Amen? And all up in us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh my goodness. What a joy to be able to just celebrate God's goodness. One more time. Amen? Amen. Oh, I, I'm going to have to stop saying this, but... Um, well, I say old folks, but I'm kind of in that category, so. Uh, glad to be in the number. One more time. The song says, just to hear you sing, just to hear you preach, and just to see your faces. So for those of you who are watching live online, um, put something in the chat on Facebook. Send us an email if you watch later on delay so that we might just stay in touch with you, that we might hear how you are glad to be in the number. One more time. On next Sunday, we will kick off our um, worship series in preparation for our church anniversary, which we will celebrate on the fourth Sunday in September, and we have some fun and wonderful things planned. I want to thank our sisters, um, Charlton Williams, Miss um, Shannon Hilton, and Miss Laura Granville for joining me and some other folk on Friday at Cleveland Academy. We heard the great news of what they are doing, and though um, Satan is busy, God is real, amen. And they are just doing some great works. And the people there, the teachers and staff have such a great heart for the students, for the parents and the community. And we will do, as you know, we do, we have a relationship with Bobo and with Cleveland. Um, I'm meeting the principal at, Cle at Bobo at the end of the month. And so we'll be ready to support these schools, not the buildings, but the people in this upcoming academic year. So we're walking the halls praying, amen? Amen. I've, I've particularly prayed in front of the bathrooms, okay? Y'all know some stuff go down in the bathrooms in school. So that was, my, that was one of my prayer points, right? You know, Lord, there's going to be no back talking, no fights. I mean, that's right. I rebuke all of that in the name of Jesus. So the good of God might happen for God's children. We are... Um, going to hear a word, hear a word from our sister, and maybe more than a word today. Amen? Amen. I'm glad to know it. I love creative folk. Um, so we're just so glad to be here. As they're um, transitioning to that, I do want to share with you um, that uh, Sister Tonda Davis and sister, her sister, our sister, our Carmen Avery, their mommy, their mama passed away yesterday morning. She just transitioned from this life to the next. This life which had been so good and she had been so faithful. Now she is, gets to be welcomed into the arms of God to no longer be sick, to no longer struggle, and to not forget anything else. Now she remembers everything, right, as she is remembered. I don't have any details because um, as you know, um, but just pray for them and, and throughout this journey of grief, just find ways of loving on them. do want to share with you, it is in our bulletin, and if you're out there watching and you would like to receive some of our information about how we do things and when we do things here at Silver Hill, we'll mail you our bulletin, um, uh, email, and U.S. Post. Um, but I do want to share, there's some announcements here, and 
One of the um, ministry opportunities, ministry events here at Civil Hill is um, if you or someone you know would like to participate in the Grief Share Ministry, um, Grief Share, um, we share your grief, we walk with you. It is a 13 week um, conversation. Um, you don't have to say anything, okay? You just get to be there, right? There's some people who, um, last time, this was their second time around. And one lady, the second to the last session, she, fi she finally felt comfortable and safe enough to share. Um, she had lost her only son, and so we just share it with you. We just walk with you. We're not going to leave you after the funeral, amen? Everybody's with you up until the chicken. Yep. After everybody get that chicken, <laughs> they start to drift away. And so what we say and do here at Silver Hill is that we will not leave you. We will walk with you until you get to that place where you can just continue your journey. So however we might be of service. All right. Are we ready? Say a prayer every night. Whatever I do, I'll get it right with no regret, no guilt, no shame. This time, no, not this time. Once I surrender, I won't dare look back. If I do, I'll get off track Move ahead in faith And patiently await your answer What will it be? Sight beyond what I see You know what's best What a way to start a Sunday morning in The house of the Lord praising Him Will you be ready? Will you be ready? I would be ready, but will you? So I want to know, will you be ready, Jimmy? 154th, will you be ready? Will you be ready, Pastor? How about you, Miss Dawkins? Will you be ready? Miss Miles, will you be ready? If you're not ready, let's get ready, y'all. Hey, we're here in the house of the Lord this Sunday morning. We're embarking on our 154th church anniversary, and all we're asking it's for $154 to share. That's it. $1 for every day that we've been here. Every year we have been here at Silver Hill Memorial United Methodist Church. So if you online, if that song moved you, let me know. Hey, we got plenty more to play. I just want to know, will you be ready? So we're seven weeks away from our church anniversary to celebrate with God on our 154th anniversary. I'm here with a grateful heart and a thankful heart, and I want you to be the same way. So in the next year and a half, we're going outside of the walls of this church. We're not going to do everything here in Silver Hill. I need to see y'all out in the community serving the Lord. One thing that happened to me when Pastor emailed me on Thursday and said, can you go to, can you go to Cleveland and meet and pray in the house? I thought, me? Like, really? <laughs> like, not me. Y'all know what? I didn't have to be at work till 1130 that day. Tell me that wasn't God. It was God. So God is moving in this place. And I want you all to be ready in this 154th and 155th church anniversary. Thank you, and you guys have a great week. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Charlton. And as part of our kickoff, um, and Charlton is right, that uh, one of the uh, events that we will do is we will just, we're just gonna go down to Crescent Hills and sugar people up, amen? Amen, we're just, I like a little sugar, amen? And I really, yeah, sugar, but I mean a sweet treat. 
And uh, the tentative date is August 29th. Uh, it's August 29th. We're only going to be out there for about an hour or so. Um, and we're just going to have a little fun and just say hi. No expectations. We're just going to say hi so that they can get to know us more. And really me, because when I came, I was trying to get around to meet people, and then COVID happened, right? And it kind of, put, kind of stalled my progress. And so this is, um, and I've already talked to the uh, manager down there, and we are going to have a good time. But please look in your um, bulletins and emails for that specific information. We'll have a flyer about that. So I'm looking forward. And we've got some stuff planned, don't we, Charlton? Oh, yeah, you know Charlton. You know Charlton's going to plan it. We're going to have us a good time. Well, anyway, and if you're watching and you are not a quote unquote member of Silver Hill, but you're one of our um, guests who um, visit and worship with us on, on the regular, well, you are a regular, amen? And you are welcome. God did not call us to make members of Silver Hill, but disciples of Jesus Christ. So however we can support you on that journey with Jesus, it is indeed our joy, our joy. Well, friends, as you are able, I ask that you please stand for our call to worship. And remain standing through to our prayer for the day, our prayer for the day, and our scripture lesson. Again, as you are able. Beloved disciples, welcome. As we gather, what are you seeking? Beloved disciples, if God's presence is all around us, what are you seeking? To seek to God's Beloved disciples of God, if God is among you, what are you seeking? Beloved disciples, if God is in the face of your neighbor, what are you seeking? As we gather today, may we meet God in our seeking and in our finding. Our hymn of celebration is, what? To God be the glory. Amen? Amen.
pray our prayer for the day together. Lord, if it's you, we need to hear from you. We are alone when we go away to pray, when we have little faith, when we are battered by the waves, when the wind is against us, when we get in the boat, when we're terrified by our ghost, when we see you on the mountain, when we cry out in fear, when we start walking on water, when we begin to sink, when we are far from land, Lord, if it's you, speak to us, calm our storms, strengthen our resolve, remind us who you are, walk to us, call to us, save us, reach out your hand and catch us, quiet the winds around us. Lord, if it's you, we worship you, for truly you are the Son of God. Amen. As you're able, remain standing, please, for our reading of our gospel lesson. Amen. And I suspect you can recognize the text from the prayer, right? Matthew, the 14th chapter. I'll, I'll tell you, I had intended in these two standalone sermons to preach from the psalm, but God decided no. So we're preaching from the gospel lesson. So friends, hear this gospel lesson from Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 22nd verse. And remember, we read and, and, and had a word last Sunday on the section right before. Okay, so this is a continuation. We might as well finish the chapter, amen? Listen, dear friends, for the word of God. Immediately, now remember, they just had the feeding of the 5,000. Immediately, Jesus made, and y'all, for this, this time, I paid more attention to that, that first word, that, um, that made word right there, right? So I want you to put a pin in it. Is that what they tell you these days? Put a pin in it. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. Other side, that's your other pen. While he dismissed the crowd, okay? Jesus doing cleanup. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Remember, Jesus was originally trying to find some time alone after the execution of his cousin, John the Baptist. But the crowds got him, right? Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately, immediately, there's that word again. Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, here comes Peter. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sing, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and called him. <laughs> you little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, mm, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Yes, 
Immediately, Jesus made disciples. Get in the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. Later that night, he was on a mountainside alone praying. But the boat already considerable distance from the land, was being buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking, they were terrified. It's a ghost. And cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Sometimes it takes a storm. Sometimes. It takes a storm. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and all wise God, holy God, for this day, oh, Jesus, we praise you. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you, oh, God, our rock and redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. Today, we give you glory and honor. Today, we acknowledge that there is none like you. And if it had not been for the Lord, who was not only on our side, but in the midst of all of our storms, where would we be? For all your goodness, O oh God, we praise you, give you glory and honor, and say that we love you. And now, O oh God, we have come to hear from you. We understand that there can be no hearing, no listening, no learning, unless your spirit come. So come, Holy Spirit. Help me to preach and help your people to hear. And then, Holy God, help us to go out into the world, to live the word, so that your name might be praised, your son glorified, and your kingdom on earth advanced. 
And we pray this prayer in your son's name. And whatever good that comes our way. And even in the midst of storms, we'll give you glory. Amen. Amen. And amen. Y'all, sometimes it takes a storm. We have had a lot of storms of late. Just Tuesday, I went to Rock Hill to be with my husband and with their setup meeting in the Rock Hill district. And my friend Emily, we'd been friends for years. Um, she's, she's so glad to see me. She's talking. But all I can see is this huge tree. We're at her church. This huge tree that is knocked down. And she's talking and looking at me. And I'm looking at the tree. I mean, just this big thing. And she goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> the tree fell down. <laughs> I'm like, no kidding. I don't mean like a little thing. I mean, it's a it's big. And then she said, yeah, we just had that retaining wall repaired from the last storm. Here's another one, right? We've had a lot of storms. Perhaps that is because this is the summer cycle that we're in, you know? The heat goes up, right? It's the season of afternoon storms and hurricanes. This season and this text has caused me to remember the storms, y'all, that I have been in. And I've been in some storms. Now, when Anthony, and some, most of you know that I generally call him Hodge, right? When Anthony and I were preparing for our wedding, this man made it clear, okay, he told me, we were talking about this, the wedding, blah, blah, blah. He tells me that he is going to wear his dress white. Now, for those of you who do not know, my husband is a retired lieutenant commander, chaplain in the Navy Reserves with over 20 some odd years. And he also served as an enlisted for a time. So he tells me he's going to wear his dress white and he's going to be looking good. That's what, and he said, and you got you to gotta catch up. You got to keep up. Really, can you believe he told me that? But he did. I mean, he threw down the gauntlet because he said, I'm going to look good, okay, in my dress whites. Not his dress blues, his dress whites. And, yeah, we got married in March. We won't even talk about why he wearing that white in March. But the thing about the dress white is that it's white, white. And most wedding dresses are what? Off-white. So I can't wear, couldn't wear an off-white because I would stand next to him and look dingy. So he, this is what he did, okay? So, you know, you have to find a narrow set of dresses. So, okay, but I got this. Okay, going to tell me I got to keep up. So I decided that our wedding theme would be kind of navy, right? The color is the blue. As a matter of fact, the theme of the wedding was called Anchors Away. Do you know the song? Anchors away. And that we actually recessed to that. The kid, the guy did a little drumming. And that was the song. Anchors away. And what it means is when you pull up anchor, it means that you're ready to go. The ship is ready to sail. Right? I would, okay, I planned all that. Now, he did most of the music. But I only put one song in the middle. One song. Here's a song I heard that a friend of mine sang on an Emmaus weekend, Walt Proctor. The anchor holds, though the ship is better. The anchor holds, though the sails are torn. I have fallen on my knees. As I face the raging seas, the anchor holds in spite of the storm. Because you see, y'all, I know. I know something about storms. I know what it means to almost drift away. I know that you can't be daddy's little girl anymore when daddy doesn't come home alive from Vietnam. Daddy promised to take you to first grade, but you go by yourself, armed and determined to be a good little soldier in the face of pain. 
You see, I, I, know, I know something about storms. I, I know that you talk to your mom on, on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, and say, we say, Mommy, you want to go to the doctor? No, I want to go to the emergency room. And then you call her back at 12 and say, Mom, I'm running a little late. I'm going to bring your lunch by pretty soon. And by the time you get there, your mama's gone. Oh, I, 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 I know a little something about storms. That you walk down the aisle and the only way your mama's there is that you got a picture of her in your bouquet. Or oh, I, I know a little something about storms. I know what it's like when the winds are not just contrary, they're tormenting. I know what it's like to be battered and betrayed, to be disappointed and to despair to be wearied from being in the storm just a bit too long. Traumatic events, these storms in our lives can leave us feeling vulnerable to the winds, to the rain. And who wants to feel vulnerable? In 10th grade, Okay, I was the cheerleader. I was the voice of the cheerleader child. And I was also on the basketball team. And I know you're saying, well, Sheila, how could you do both? Well, it was a girls' basketball team. I would have to go and change during basketball season and then go and cheer for the boys. It's okay. Okay, I could do it. So I, I know I, I, know I should have been in basketball practice. But no, I'm up under the science wing, which you know how, you know, you know. Some of the players were down there. We all just having a good time talking. And two friends, he didn't mean he was angry. They had stolen something the night before when they were arguing over it. And he pulled out the knife. And in anger, he stabbed him. And we're all standing there. He falls. Somebody goes and gets Mr. Young, the vice principal. He is trying to revive him. There's, there's Miss, we're, and we're standing there, and, my, and he dies. As his blood runs down the parking lot. I'm sitting there waiting for my mother to come get me, and the, the news people are coming. Rosa is on my shoulder, weeping. The other, I don't even remember who's on my left. And the lady's got a mic in my face, and I'm like, ma'am, I, I, I can't talk about this. Traumatic events, these storms. <laughs> I was planning vacation Bible school, right? And what was in the church office at Wesley, and, and Dolores is there, and Annabelle, and, and my friend, my choir member, who sang soprano, who sang all of my steps like it was nothing. She had become the financial secretary. She had been a part of my prayer group, Gwen. And Gwen, I remember when Gwen came to the prayer group and she said, I believe the Lord is calling me to, to I wanted to, she wanted to have a child. And so there we, we were praying for her, laying hands on her. And when she got pregnant with, oh man, with Adriana, you couldn't tell. Child, we believe we was praying then, you know. It was all going so well, y'all. Then she came to the prayer group and she said, I know the Lord wants me to change careers, to go, to leave, and to, to be a nurse prayed for. She quit a job. And she said, well, I got more time to work in the church. So she became the financial secretary. And while I was playing a vacation Bible school, and it was Friday, y'all, it was funny. And I was joking with her. I said, there's only one other parent at Wesley United Methodist Church who could beat Desiree <laughs> to put their child's application in registration for, for vacation Bible school. And that would be Adriana's mama. And we all laughed, and I can see her now. She took off her sweater because she told, said that Dolores and Annabelle kept the office too cold. And they said, well, we all, we get our way, you just get a sweater. And so they brought her this sweater. <laughs> and she hung up the sweater. She looked at me, she goes, all right, Sheila, see you Monday. I said, okay, see ya. 
She walked down the hall, out of the back door of the Gadsden building, got in a car, and I never saw her live again. That weekend was Father's Day weekend, and she, her husband was coming up to Greenville. Bad car accident. And I know like any mama, she'd rather be her than Adriana. Adriana didn't get a scratch on her. But Gwen was dead in three days and I couldn't go see her because I was running. These traumatic events, these storms. When it comes to storms, I am confident that I am not the only one. Please make no mistake about it. I, I know I'm not the only one. I bet some of you too know what it means to be in the midst of a storm. I may not know what your storms have been or will look like. And all of you who ain't been in a storm yet, let me tell you, like the song says, there's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this away. And, and if your soul ain't anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. You live long enough, you will see, you will know some storms. Perhaps it's the storm of a difficult diagnosis, the thing you fear the most. Maybe the gale force wind of the death of a child of a loved one. The helplessness of a parent. The end of a relationship you had hoped, you believed was the one. Or losing the job you you never imagined you'd be without. Since so many of us know the impact of storms, it is interesting to know that Jesus, read that text. I have read that text over before many times, but I, I honed in what seemed to catch me this time was that Jesus made, Jesus made them get in the boat. A better translation might be Jesus forced them, Jesus compelled them, Jesus pushed the people in the boat, told them to go get in the boat and go to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, it seemed like Jesus would need a little help to dismiss the crowd, but Jesus sends them in the boat. Getting in the boat is Jesus' idea. Jesus, you see, I believe he's still determined to have time away, time to commune with God. His cousin had been executed. But we need to be aware of this point right here, is that Jesus didn't keep them from the storm. Ain't that something? Because sometimes we think that our life of faith, that if God really loves me, God would keep me from the storm, amen? My life would always be good. The road would always rise up to meet me. There would be blue skies, birds shipping. You know how it is. Gray skies are going to clear up. Put on a happy face, right? Right? Sometimes it takes a storm. He didn't advise them to stay around the shore, okay? Because he was up on the mountain. He could have said, well, look here. Y'all just stay around. Y'all stay around right here. Y'all just, y'all just right here around the shore. I'm going up here, and I'm going to be back. But no, Jesus told him, get yourself in the boat. Get in the boat. Go to the other side. Even though Jesus, I mean, I was to name Jesus. Even though he and Shirley, the disciples, who were all fishermen, well, except for Matthew, but they were fishermen. They knew that windstorms were sudden and frequent weather patterns of that region. They knew that a storm could come up any minute, and then you're going to get yourself in a boat in the evening? That just doesn't seem to make good sense. But there was a destination. In mind, they, we, they were going someplace. We are supposed to be going someplace with God. And sometimes to get to the place that God has prepared for us, 
the place God is calling us or sending us in order to get there, in order to get to the other side, in order to get to wholeness, in order to get to next level faith, in order to get to new era ministries, in order to get through our fear, our preoccupation with ourselves and our wants, our past, our fears, we may have to go through. Maybe the only way we're going to get to the other side is that we got to go through. Go through the storm. Because sometimes it just takes a storm. So while Jesus is up on the mountain praying, his disciples are in a life-threatening situation. One commentator says that they are literally being tormented by the waves. They are exhausted from the roar of the wind and, and their efforts to keep the boat afloat from evening until early in the morning hours. They had been in the storm. And you know good and well, somebody, I'm, I'm, I'm betting on Peter, but anyway, I, you, I'm, I'm, I know that good well, somebody said as the ship is rocking and moving and, they, and they're filled with this. I mean, if we wouldn't be here if Jesus had told us to get in the boat, amen. You know good and well, somebody, because they're humans, because one of us would say it. That's why sometimes we don't want to do something where we don't have all the plans, okay? That's we, we, Lord, we'll do this if you tell us how it's all going to work out. Yeah, that's what we want. We want to know everything up front. We want to see the master and the master's plan. Well, that ain't faith and that show ain't trust. I bet you there was somebody who said, child, I wish we were back on the shoreline. Why did we come out here anyway? Oh, my God. You know there was. And to put their struggle in Jesus' appearance and context, for them to see, for there was first century people, for them to see represented chaos and danger because it was unpredictable. I sailed around the world. I was part of the shipboard education. And when you're coming around the Cape of Good Hope, and it, the Cape of Good Hope back in, you know, the, the exploration days, it was like the place people wouldn't have died, okay, because it was so dangerous, particularly a certain time of year. Because you have the cold water current of the Atlantic meeting the hot water of the Pacific, and the two of them go swoosh. So some of us, okay, yeah, it was me, I was there. Okay, now I'm supposed to be the professor on the ship. I'm supposed to be right. I, I am. I'm one of the adults. But we get these slickers, and we are out on the deck to see if we can get airborne because of the winds were so much. We're trying to get airborne, okay? It seemed like a good idea at the time, Brother Williams. I'm just... <laughs> the sea was this place of death and pain. Right? Things could go wrong. A place where they were exposed and vulnerable to forces beyond their control. When you are out there in the middle of the ocean, it's between you and whatever's out there. You're exposed, you're vulnerable. To them, it was the, the sea represented a place where God was absent. And so oftentimes in our lives, when we are in storms, sometimes we think that God is not there. So they have been alone with these threatening waves for hours, and this time Jesus wasn't in the boat with them. Go back to chapter 8, and remember, Jesus is asleep. Jesus is asleep in the boat in the winds, and somebody goes up to him and says, Jesus, Jesus, wake up. Don't you care that we about to die? And Jesus looks at them and goes, ah. Right? And they say, what kind of person does this? Comes and speaks to the winds and the waves. Huh? What is this? This time they couldn't go to Jesus and wake him up because Jesus put them in the boat. But he on the mountain, Amen. 
This time they were on their own. That's what they thought. Isn't that how we think that some of us, when we're going through storms, we'll think that we're, we got to do this by ourselves, that we're in it all by ourselves. But then Jesus comes. Jesus comes to them in the midst of the terror of the tempest, walking on water. Now, after all they had seen Jesus do, he had just been a part of this miraculous, this divine fellowship. They, they had been in the boat with Jesus before. They had seen thing after thing that Jesus had done. And so they couldn't imagine that it would be Jesus. Sometimes we can't imagine that God will show up in all of our mess. They can't imagine that it would be Jesus. They can't imagine that the source of life would be coming to them and not the specter of death. Fear will do that to you. Fear will make you see things that are not really there. They, they oh, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's a shadow, baby. It ain't the real thing. Fear will make you see things. Fear can prevent you and I from seeing clear. And Jesus speaks to their hearts in the midst of the storm. That's right. Jesus will speak a word of hope in the midst of all of our mess, even if it's mess that we made. Jesus will speak to our storm. He, Jesus, is going to get down there and speak to you to give us courage. To give us courage, to help us see, to let us know that I am with you. I'm here. In our text, Jesus says, read it. Jesus says, it is I. That sounds so nice. That's so pretty. It is I. But in the Greek, it is I am. In Hebrew, it is Yahweh. That's right. I am is here. The one whom the psalmist exclaims rules over the surging seas when its waves mount up. You steal them. I am is here. I am the one who is greater than the storm. I am is here. The one who is greater than all of the forces of hell that are arrayed against you. I am is near in the midst of the storm. I I am is here. And I don't know. I don't know why he said it. Who knows why Peter says anything? Maybe Peter was just being Peter, needing to prove himself, needing to prove that he's the best disciple because he the rock, he going to do. Maybe that, that's just Peter. Or maybe he still needed proof that it was indeed Jesus, which really means that he was a bold somebody then. Maybe Peter needed to know not just that it was Jesus, but Jesus was who he thought he was. that Jesus not only had the authority to speak to the winds and the waves, but in Christ he could do what looked like the impossible. That he could tread upon that which he feared. Peter says to Jesus, if it's you, now you know that's a little cold to Jesus, if it's you, right? But if it's you, if it's you, Jesus, command me to come to the water with you. Command me to come to you, Jesus. And I like what Jesus said. Jesus is one word, come. It's like he said, well, come on in. Bring it. Come on. When Peter steps out of the boat, and is walking. <laughs> he enters the tumult that earlier he had tried to escape. Isn't that something? When you look to Jesus, the stuff that used to make you afraid, you speak to, right? But this time, 
He does it because he knows Jesus is there. And yeah, I know that he doubted. If. Almost tested Jesus. But we do the same thing. I know Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. I know he looked at the winds and the waves, but to tell you the truth, we do the same thing. So you ain't got no business critiquing Peter. Well, Peter should have known better. He should have kept his eyes on Jesus. There have been plenty of times in our own lives when we didn't keep our eyes on Jesus. We talk more about our problems, what's going wrong, than the providential care of God. Amen? We can sing the song, count your many blessings. Uh-uh, but we, what we do, we may count our blessings, but we're going to name all our problems. That's right. We can talk about what we used to have. Uh-huh. What used to be as if God can't create something altogether new and better for you. Amen. Why are we forever looking back when Jesus is up front going, well, I'm over here. Are you ready to come? So he took his eyes off of Jesus in the midst of the storm. But you got to give Peter credit. He knew whom to call on. Jesus, save me. Some of us try to save ourselves. That's right. Won't call on the Lord, amen? Won't admit we need help. Uh-huh. You want to know why you've been in the storm so long? You keep you there, Amen. All I know is that sometimes it takes a storm for our faith to grow. Sometimes it takes a storm for us to see Christ more clearly. Because after they got in the boat, after they got in the boat, they had a revelation finally. This is the 14th chapter. They done been with Jesus a minute. They finally have a revelation that truly, this is their second storm with Jesus. Seems like the first storm they might have got it, but don't ridicule anybody. Sometimes it takes people a couple of storms to go through. We love to say, but I don't understand how they just did not, they just did not, are not doing better. Well, it, it, sometimes it takes a couple of storms. Don't judge anybody's, right? Now they know that he is the son of God. They went from fear to greater faith. What I've come to realize is that sometimes, y'all, it just takes a storm. It takes a storm to gain insight into the power and presence of Christ. How do you know what God can do if you don't need to lean and, and see God do it? Amen? If you can depend on you, then I guess you don't need God. Amen? Amen. So you don't need to know what God can do. Sometimes it takes a storm for some of us to call on the name of the Lord. Some of us think we got our stuff all together until it all goes south, until we can't keep up with nothing, until we are just, some of us need to go through a storm in order to call on the name of the Lord. Some of us need to go through a storm to know that we need to be saved and that Jesus is the only one who can save us. Sometimes it takes a storm for us to be able to recognize that God is near, that God is an ever-present help in the time of need. Sometimes it takes a storm for us to really know and truly trust that Jesus is who he says he is and will do what he says he'll do. Sometimes it just takes a storm. Because when you come out of that storm, oh, now you know something, amen? Amen, you know something. Because you have been through the storm. And you know that God has kept you through it all. 
Sometimes it takes a storm for us to realize that we are not alone. Why we try to do things by ourselves like that? Sometimes it just takes a storm to deepen our faith. Because when our faith, if our faith is when it's all good, clear skies and rainbows and butterflies. That's why it's just so it's just so wonderful. We have a tendency to see us more than we see Christ. We have a tendency to think we did it. Even though God is keeping us then too. Sometimes it takes a storm for our courage and conviction to be cultivated and revealed. You, you need courage when everything's good? Do you have conviction of your faith when everything is fine, maybe? But I bet you that's the soul that's been through some storms. Sometimes it takes a storm to hear Christ calling us to move beyond the limits of where we have always been. Sometimes God's got to tear down your Jericho walls in order for you to move on to the promised land. Because mm -hmm. we get comfortable in our walls. We get comfortable with where we are because change is hard. Right? We like to be comfortable. But sometimes it takes a storm for us to realize that we do not have to just suffer through it. God don't want you to just suffer through it. But that Christ, but that in Christ we can step out on it and step out from it. Friends, I, I, I don't know what rough waters you have faced or are facing right now. I know that some of us have come to church, some of us are watching online, and we are going through hell and high water right this minute. But you are trying to keep it all together and even keep it to yourself. I need you to call on the name of Jesus. I need you to just know that Jesus is near and wants to save you. Jesus is near and wants to be your help. Jesus is near and trying to bring you through to the other side. One of the lessons from this text that I love so much is that God wants us, throughout scripture, God wants us to have and to live abundant lives. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, I didn't say there weren't going to be any storms, but I still want you to have abundant life. Yes, y'all, we are all vulnerable to the vicissitudes of life. You don't know how you're going to leave here, amen? And that what folks say? And you don't know what you're going to encounter while you're here. But Jesus says, fear not. It is I. Fear not. I am that I am. Fear not. Don't live in fear, my brothers and sisters. Don't live in fear. Don't live in fear that they might get diagnosed you with cancer. Don't live in fear. Don't live in fear that they might diagnose you with Alzheimer's. Don't live in fear. Don't live waiting for the other shoe to drop. Don't live in fear. Fight fear with faith. Have the courage that even, even if it comes, God is with me in the midst of it. Even if I go through high water and I got to face that, God is going to face it with me in some kind of way. I'm going to come through the other side. I'm going to get to the other side. God's going to get me to the other side now, okay? The sails may be tattered, amen, and the ship may be bruised, but I'm going to get to the other side with God. God doesn't want us to hold back, to hold back our hope because we're afraid, to hold back our love because we've been hurt before. God doesn't want us to live trying to numb ourselves to the pain of the past. God doesn't want us to live lives of shame. You have nothing to be ashamed of. I don't care what happened. You're a child of God. God loves you. No, just, no, no. Well, you don't know what I did. No, but God does and God loves you anyhow. Child, come up out of that. Walk over it and step out of it. 
You don't have to be ashamed that you almost sank. You don't have to be ashamed that you had to call on Jesus to come save you. You don't have to be ashamed of that. You should be glad and tell people, oh, the devil almost had me, child. But Jesus came in and grabbed me. Jesus picked me up. Amen. Amen. The devil tried to kill me. <laughs> More than one occasion, isn't that right, Charlton? But the Lord said, I got you, girl. I'm going to grab you. And now you still walking. The devil has tried, and you said, and you just stepped all over that and him. Amen. Amen. That's right. When the Lord has done that for you, you are a living testimony. You get to live with hope because you know what the Lord can do. So you see, sometimes it takes a storm. Sometimes it takes a storm for you to know. And somebody's going to see your storm walking ability and say, well, if she can walk through it, if she can walk up out of it, <laughs> well, then I know I can because the same God that loves her loves me. So let's, let's start walking, y'all. Let's start walking toward Jesus. Let's get to the other side where, where God wants us to be, where God is calling us. We don't have to worry about what went down back then because God says, I'm a now kind of God. I, I have redeemed all of that in the past. I have restored you in the present. So child, let's go forward for the future. That's what we need to think about as we celebrate an anniversary. We ain't just celebrating a church anniversary, y'all. We're celebrating 154 years of being in and out of the storm. But Ahab, we are a testimony that trouble don't last always, that the winds will die down because Jesus is going to say peace. Peace over our lives prosperity over our families. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen. Give God some glory.
Bless his seas. Amen. Praise. I'm going to praise God at all times. So what does the psalmist say? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises. God's praises shall always be continually be in my mouth. Amen? Amen. That's right. We're talking about storms, but we're praising God anyhow. Amen? Amen. That is what we do. That is, that is what we need to do. That needs to be who we are. Amen? Amen? So that others might be encouraged. So that others might be encouraged. Y'all, I just, I just know the storms, storms come. And I'm not judging your fears. Fear is just human. Okay? Fears are just human. When you are facing something that you have never faced before, how do you not have some fear? But we have to remember and it can be hard to remember. When you've been in the storm for a minute, let's just be honest, it can be hard to remember. That's why you need the church. That's why you need somebody else to, to speak a word. To say, sis, I'm praying for you. So it's the anchor is still there, the anchor. If you're watching today, and <clears throat> name your fears. You don't need to name all. Just what is that one today? Come on, y'all. Just sit there for just a minute. If you're watching online, I want you to just think, what is this, the one thing? What is the one storm that you, that you keep going back in? Amen. It's not a new storm. It's the same storm. Amen. That God wants you to step out of it and to tread on it. What is it? I want you to think right now. I just want you to spend just a second, just a couple of seconds. Is it the fear about the health of, of your child? Is it the fear about the health of a sibling? Is it someone you love so much, but you, you have tried everything to save them? and you're struggling to give them to Jesus? Is it something about your past? Something I don't, you did, I don't know, and people see it, you would, you know, you thought you disappointed people. Well, baby, you can't disappoint God as long as you continue to love God and you desire to serve him. God, God forgives. If they can't, well, we're gonna pray for them. We're gonna step out of that and maybe step away from them. For a season. I want you to whisper it under your breath and then I want you to say, God is with me. Okay? Whatever it is you said, and then you say, God is with me. I'm afraid of, of such and such. God is with me. I'm afraid I lose my job. God is with me. I'm afraid so and so won't be all right. God is with me. Say, right? We have to, rem it, and it can be hard, but we have to remember that God is with us. Never, ever to leave us or forsake us. Never can forget about us. That's who we are to God. And no, we're not perfect. <laughs> we, we sink. <laughs> and Jesus says, I know. And I'm here. God is with us. Is there anyone here today who wants to step out of that? And you know God. I don't say you don't know God. But are you in relationship fully with God? Growing in that relationship. Have you said yes to that relationship? That is what I that is that is what I want to know. That is what we want to 
um, talk to you about and to help you to find that, not just to feel it, but to know it. To give you the pathway to live it, right? To live it. That's the purpose of the church. That's what it means to be part of the body of Christ. If you're watching online, just give me a call. Our number and information will come up on the screen. Uh, we've been here 154 years. You can find us. You can find us in here. I'm just saying. Amen. Just call the church. A beautiful assistant will put you in touch with me. You can email however. If you're here today and you feel like you've been in the storm, and you want prayer, the support of the body, the prayers of the people. If you don't have a place that can help strengthen you for the journey. Because some commentators want to say that the ship, the boat that they were in, that that represents the church. You got to get back in the boat, man. You can go out there walking a little bit, but you got to get back in the boat. Amen. Are you in the boat? Or are you out there trying to tread by yourself? Even if it is for a season, whatever time that season is, you are welcome. God, you're welcome to be a part of this fellowship and body of believers. Because we are going somewhere with God. We ain't going back. We're going on to the other side for our generation. Not the other side for the previous generation, but the other side for now. You're welcome to be a part of this, this fellowship. We invite you now, if anyone wants to come today, we invite you. Well, if you have any prayer concerns, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> I invite them now, if you would like to share them. We already know that we're praying for Miss Little John's family. Um, Miss Little John was 90 something years old. Okay. She was surrounded by her loved ones. They said her transition, she had a smile on her face. Amen. So she gets to go home. She has a home to go. But we're just praying for the family because it's still mama and grandma. Amen got to learn to live without that love, even if that love didn't live in the world the same as she did in previous years. Are there any other prayer concerns that you might have? Okay, we're praying for Sister Margaret, who had surgery. We prayed last week as she was preparing for surgery, and we're also not, we're praying for recovery. That's right. Recovery ain't easy, amen? <laughs> Are there any other prayer concerns? Well, friends, let us pray. O oh, merciful and gracious God, for all the ways in which you demonstrate your great love for us, how you help to reveal your presence among us. And Lord, we know that sometimes the wind and the waves, the spray from it can cloud our sight. Help us, oh God, help us to see you more clearly, to see your love, to see your presence, to see your power at work for us and in us. And Lord, maybe we need to see that in the lives of others, to know that you don't give up on anyone. Help us also to not give up on anyone. Help us, oh God, to know and to follow you as you call us and send us to the other side. Help us to have the courage and conviction to go, to go through the tumult, which is just a meantime experience. It isn't forever. 
for those who are sick and sad, to those who are imprisoned, whether behind prison bars or bars of their own creation of anger and resentment and unforgiveness. For all prisoners, we pray for release. For all those who are sick, restoration. And to all those who do not know you or think they don't need you, we still pray for redemption. In Jesus' name, amen. So what we will put, what, well, it's really me, Tamara just, <laughs> if I tell her, okay. So it's, gonna, it's we. What I want to put in next week's bulletin, because our phone system is off right there, um, is a prayer. Um, 12th century monk, I think, saint, can't remember. But it's a very simple color. And for a season, I prayed this every day before I left, would leave the house. And every night. Day by day, oh dear Lord, three things I pray. To see you more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly, day by day. And it may seem, well, it is short, but it's a powerful prayer day by day. I just want to see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. So we'll put that in the bulletin so that you can have that. Okay. Now, as we prepare to um, receive our offering, um, and before we say the prayer, there is a video. She says, hopefully, and the, the tech people are looking at me like, oh, no. Okay, so let me tell you what happened. And I'll friend to the tech guys. I, a lot of times, I am, um, because I, 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 I plan, and then I, then when it comes, I think, oh, no, I want to do something different. I say you blame the Holy Ghost, not me, okay? Just a little bit. Okay, it's a little bit of both. So today, we celebrate Aldersgate Sunday. And there is a video about it that I wanted you to see. But I did it like three weeks ago. <laughs> I did it weeks in advance. <laughs> the, poor pre the poor guys are accustomed to me just, you know, in a whim, two, you know, two days before. Hey, let's do this. So when I give them a lot of notice, it kind of freaks them out a little bit. Uh, so we will share that video with you next week. Um, we do have special offering envelopes, Aldersgate Sunday. And I told you a little bit about it last week. It is our, um, the, United, the South Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church helps support, support two homes for adults with special needs. So, and of these homes um, also have retirement facilities, so they get to still live with some of their parents. But as their parents may pass on, they have a safe and loving place where um, people minister to them and this is a ministry of the South Carolina Annual Conference and has been for over 20 some odd years, 25 or so years. So just remember, you don't have to give it all. Every dollar or two dollars or 20 or 500, um, every dollar you give is connected to the dollar that somebody else gives. The dollars that Silver Hill gives gets collected with the dollars that Bethel gives that the whole conference gives. This is what it means to be a part of a connectional church. So we get to do great work. So it's not the amount, it's the that, that we give, okay? All right, we'll show that video next week. Please stand, friends, as we prepare to give to God a tenth, a tithe of that which God has given us. <clears throat> Our offertory prayer is printed in our bulletin. Let us say our prayer together. Forgiving God, the first offering you ask is for the giving of ourselves, loving you and others boldly, refusing to let our fear of the storms around us 
Keep us from taking risks. Forgive us for times when you have called us to leave our places of comfort and we've ignored the call. Forgive us when our giving has not grown beyond our safety zone, but you blessed our gifts and us anyway. For those times when we dared to put our foot outside the boat and then sank up to our knees, thank you for not taking your hand away. For all this, we give thanks in the holy name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. A hey, friends, you may be seated as our financial stewards come, and I will make certain that you have your hands.
Well, friends, again, we're just so delighted to have had this time to uh, worship together. Amen? Amen? We are ready to go forward, to walk through storms, and to praise God in the midst. Amen? Amen. Amen. Again, please remember to um, the Little John family, um, just sort of journey with them. We'll just keep them in prayers. And when we find out more information, we will certainly let you know, okay? Um, the ushers and will give you the offering envelopes for Aldersgate Sunday, and we'll just celebrate that, and we'll pass that out um, next Sunday. It's okay. It's, it's all right. Um, we're just glad that we got to be here together. Now, friends, let us go out into the world, knowing that sometimes it takes a storm, but in all of our fears, our faults, our failures, our joys, our good days, that God is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. Go in peace. Amen.